It's time for Washington Fish Quest. This episode, Resident Jack Coho Salmon. Hey, welcome to the 50th episode of the kind of regular part of Washington Fish Quest. Boy, am I excited because I'm on my way to meet my buddy Zach and we're going to target some resident Jack Hatchery Cohos. Now, if you're not from Washington State, you're probably saying, what's a Jack Coho? Uh, so in Washington State, because a lot of other states don't have it this way, you if a, if a coho is 12 to 20 inches, you count it as a jack. Uh, and that's in fresh or salt water. So these, uh, and obviously there are jack cohos in fresh water that go up to spawn early. But if it's in the salt water and it happens to be under 20 inches, you still put it on your cart as a jack. So that's the distinction there. It's really a legal thing opposed to a biological thing in the salt water anyway. And Zach, in addition to being an excellent angler, has my personal favorite Instagram account. That's how we met, actually. It was just on the, on the gram, as the kids call it. As far as someone that's in the Deep South Sound, who uh, this does great for kings, cohos, and sea run coastal cuts. I have not seen a uh, Instagram even close. I mean, he just uh, slays. So uh, you can check him out at uh, let's see, what is it? Pacific Northwest Fishing Attic, uh, and I think that's P N W Fishing Addict. Uh, you know, I got it at the bottom there because I probably butchered it. But uh, really nice Instagram. He takes great photos of uh, beautiful fish. Up. Oh. Zach, I'm the first spot of the day. I was just getting my camera equipment ready to follow him on his drift. It's drawing a going tide. Hooked into one. What you got there, Zach? Sea uh, run cutthroat. Nicely done, sir. There he goes. Was that your first cast? Yeah. First oh, cast. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, that's Zach anyway for you. So one of my New Year's resolutions was to learn to fly fish better. So I fly fish maybe once a year in a creek or, you know, a small river or something. And uh, I usually have a good time, but I am really bad at it. I give up too quickly and just go to terminal gear, <laughs> you know, and just start throwing a cast master or something. So uh, super nice of Zach to take me out and kind of show me the ropes. Yeah, just, you know, boy, it sure is great. I mean, just watching him, I see how he's stripping. I was doing that all wrong. I uh, also just looking at how he does his false cast, which is, you know, in the, the lines behind you. I truly am a babe in the woods when it comes to, to the fly fishing. So uh, if you're a purist or a snob, you might want to either avert your eyes or go ahead and throw up. Because <laughs> my form is garbage. But that's why it's a New Year's resolution. It's good to learn to walk sometimes. Here's a look at the flies I'm using. I just went into a local fly shop and uh, had them give me what they recommended. However, these are for coastal cutthroat trout. Uh, part of the reason we're targeting these cohos is coastal cutthroat are currently spawning, or at least a lot of them are. In South Sound, they spawn in return. So there are some coastal cuts around, like the one that Zach just caught. But uh, right now, a lot of them are up in the streams, uh, laying their reds. Zach just got a nice uh, resident coho over there. For our gear, we're both using six-weight rods. I have a sinking line, and Zach is using a floating line. Zach here is giving me one of his hand-tied flies, and hopefully that will, uh, oh, he gave me two, to uh, help with my cruddiness. <laughs> Zach was just very nicely telling me if I lose this fly, no big deal. He's releasing a resident coho while he's doing it. My best guest of the day. There we go. Normally on this channel I'll be blabbing as I was reeling in a fish. However, this would be my first fish caught in a fly rod in the salt water. So I am really into this. I'm not even thinking about filming during this entire fight. Oh, 
it's a beautiful hatchery uh, coho. That is the nicest one of these resident uh, deep south sound hatchery coho I have ever caught in the winter. This guy, it's in the 15, 16, I'd say it's 16 easy. I mean, this is a nice fish. Holy smokes. Thank you, Zach. I owe you. Whoop. I don't know if you can see him, but there he goes. And to be clear, that's a perfectly legal fish to retain. I think you can keep two of them hatchery uh, jack coho. Uh, but, you know, let it go. Grow bigger for another day. But as far as the ones I've caught, that was my personal best for these winter residents. You know, that fish will grow up, you know, and it'll, it'll move north and maybe south again. Uh, you know, it'll be a adult coho one day. Uh, but that was probably a 16-inch fish. That was awesome. That was, I am stoked. Thank you, Zach. Oh, there's one. Got one on here. Oh, let's see what we got. No, 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 no. Oh, there's the fight. Oh, coho number two here. Didn't really get a good shot of that one. It uh, uh, leapt out of my uh, wet hand as I was taking the hook out, but that's more what I'm accustomed to, more like an 11, 12 incher uh, down in this neck of the woods. That first one really was a, a mondo, definitely my personal best for this time of year. So before we go, I just wanted to see if Zach had any words of wisdom to impart to the aspiring Southern Puget Sound fly angler. I would, uh, I would say covering water and looking for jumping fish, uh, kind of fun, and really just to get, get to know your home water. Um, get a couple of beaches that you have lined up that you can really just fish over and over again and try and figure out what the different patterns of the fish are there. They all have their different patterns for every, for every beach. Oh, that's great, thanks Zach. And I said well, when you weren't listening just how great your Instagram pictures are. Do you have any uh, kind of philosophy with uh, photos or anything? Um, I, I, like to, I like to really try and make sure that I'm not shaking the camera. Ah, that's something I could use in my channel. I like to not shake the camera, <laughs> make sure that uh, the biggest thing is making sure that the health of the fish is okay. Yeah. Um, always just make sure if you're taking a, fi a picture of a fish, don't think that the picture is more important if it's damaged or if it's not looking too great. Just throw it back, you'll get another one, and you, you can take a picture of that one. Yeah, I've noticed you always have wet hands in your pictures, too. I do. Too. I always wet my hands. I like to keep the, the trout in the water or in the net. I don't really like to uh, take them out of the water for too long, maybe five seconds tops, and yeah. then just let them go. This has been uh, just like a, such a treat. Um, this is seriously like better than a guided tour because I've learned so much yeah, no just watching you fly fish, you know? And the fish were just a bonus, you know. It was, yeah. It wasn't, a, it wasn't as hot as I was hoping it would be today, but we still got some fish, and it was, a, it was a good time. All right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, so big of you, because I know you sacrificed a bunch of personal fish, so I could hey, go spook them. <laughs> I go fishing a lot, so. Hey, all right. It's not a, it's not a risk for me. Hey, cool beans. Well, thank you so much, everybody, and see you next time on Washington Fish Quest.